Okay, so this is part two of the ultimate beginner complex tutorial. <laughs> so in the first part of this series, we built a super simple chat app. So if you haven't watched that first part, you might want to pause this one and go check that one out first. In this video, we're going to build on that one and we're going to call out to an external service and return that data to the user. So don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Let's get started. All right, so what we now want to do is make it so that if we type slash wiki and then something like programming, then what it's going to do is going to call out to Wikipedia and then return some information about programming and enter that into the chat. So the logical place to do this, I think, is in our send message mutation. So let's update it to look like this. So as before, we are inserting the message, but now we have this part that looks to see if the user has entered a slash wiki command. And if they have, we grab the topic from that command and send off a call to Wikipedia, parse out the summary, and then insert another message, but this time from the Wikipedia user. All right, so let's try this out. If I type slash wiki programming and hit enter, I should see a summary from the Wikipedia article on programming, but uh, I don't. So let's pop over in the console and see what's going on here. Ah, we have a convex error. Can't use fetch in queries and mutations. Please consider using an action. All right, so the issue here is that for convex to be able to provide those strong transactional guarantees and the awesome reactivity that we talked about in the first video, then queries and mutations must be deterministic. Put simply, that means that we can't make calls to the outside world from within those. And it's definitely a bit different if you're more familiar with other serverless platforms like AWS Lambda or Google Cloud Run or one of the others. So how are we gonna make that call to Wikipedia then? Well, fortunately, Convex has this third core primitive to go alongside mutations and queries for exactly this purpose. It's called action. The action is where we do our effectual code, such as calling out to external services. So let's write one of those right now. So here we define an internal action. And because we don't want this particular one to be called from the client, and instead we just want it to be called from our send message mutation, we're gonna make it internal. The function is gonna be called get Wikipedia summary, and it's gonna take a topic as its args. And then inside there, it's gonna do the call to Wikipedia from before, extract it and return. Also note here that we used a helper function inside our convex function. We can do that just like any other normal TypeScript code. All right, so let's test out our internal action now. Let's pop over in the convex dashboard, go to the functions tab, open the get Wikipedia summary function and enter any value for our topic and run it. And in just a few milliseconds, we have our lovely extract. Great, so that works, but now we need to be able to call our action from within our send message mutation. But if we do something like this, where we just call our action directly from the mutation, we're gonna get another error. That's because it would break our rules about not using fetch within mutations. So instead, what we need to introduce here is the final piece of the puzzle, the scheduler. The scheduler lives within the sync engine part of Convex and is callable from our mutations. And as the name implies, it allows us to schedule work that could be done at a future date from within other Convex functions. So let's see this in action by inserting it into our send message mutation here. So now we're using the schedule to immediately invoke our internal action with the given topic. And the cool thing about writing code like this is just like the database, the scheduler is transactional within a mutation. So that means if we had something that looked like this, for example, where the mutation has some other code after our wiki call that potentially threw an error, then our entire mutation would fail and thus our action would never get scheduled and called. And so this removes a lot of potential corrupted state issues that you might encounter as your project grows. And this is definitely a good thing, trust me. All right, so we are now almost done. Just the final part we need to do is we need to insert another message into our messages table from our internal action. Now we can't access this database directly from within actions, but we can call our send message mutation like so. Here we're using the context to run our mutation. But as we have a hammer now uh, in the form of the scheduler, everything starts to look like a nail. So <laughs> let's use the scheduler here as well. All right, so that's it. Let's try this out now. Okay, so now if I type slash wiki programming and hit enter, it's gonna call our mutation, which is then gonna schedule our internal action, which is then gonna call Wikipedia and schedule another call to our send message mutation to add a message to our database. And ta-da, we have our Wikipedia entry. All right, so that's part two for this ultimate tutorial. You're gonna to wanna to subscribe as I'm gonna be doing part three very soon. Until next time, thanks for watching. Cheerio.